No mai hari mai piki mai kaki mai tihe mo rora. Ko Isaac tine mihi atu na kia koto tine ra. Fiti ora kite faya o kite o marma. Fiti kironga fiti kiraro. Inu nu kite poa tu inu nu kite kite ra kau. Tita ha kite nei taha. Tita ha kite ra taha. Tihe mo rora. Let's go be seated. Proverbs chapter 24, verses 3 and 4. By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Marina, everyone, I want to start my part of the uh, assembly in a minute, but there's something uh, very important I'd like to do first. Though, um, just facing that haka then, I was thinking of a guest who's not here, Ash Wilson, who was the lead structural engineer in the design of the hall. And Ash told me uh, on a visit that we can't do a school, whole school haka with everyone upstairs. He hasn't designed the hall for that. Um, but we survived, I'll let Ash know. Um, so before I start the official part of the assembly, I actually want to acknowledge Alex Riley, who's on stage with his friend Jackson Bond. Uh, Alex, as the school knows, um, has been in hospital for, for over six months after uh, contracting a virus at Christmas time. So I want to acknowledge uh, your effort, Alex, joining us this morning. Alex is a very proud Boys High student. Um, it's wonderful to have you here with us today. It, it's, it's great. Um, and the effort you made to attend the first 15 final uh, was acknowledged by the boys. It, it did make a difference. It lifted the boys. So it's um, fantastic to have you here this morning. And I understand you want to say a couple of words? Okay. Well, um, I think I should probably start by giving a bit of an explanation as to where I've been for the past eight months. So on the 17th of January this year, I was admitted to Nelson Hospital while I was on holiday with a rare illness called Guillain-Barre syndrome, which basically attacks your autoimmune system and I was left completely paralyzed um, for a wee while, yeah. So um, since then I've been making slow but steady recovery. Um, the purpose of me speaking today is really just to say a big thank you. Um, thank you to the 1,500 odd boys who have had my back over the past eight months. Thank you to the staff who have stood by me through thick and thin, really. <coughs> it's in times like these where you really realise how lucky you are to go to a school like Christchurch Boys. Um, it's funny how insignificant everything can seem after an experience like I've had. Throughout this year, I've really realised what's important in life things like your health, family, and friends. I didn't appreciate what I had until it was taken away from me, and I never knew how quickly everything could change. To those of you that are worrying about exams or other events in your personal life, remember to keep things in a healthy perspective. Take the time to step back, and take a deep breath. Don't let your worries hold you back from living your life. Simply celebrate being alive, Alti Repetto. Well done, buddy. Hey, you're going to leave stage in a minute, but you don't know about this bit. Just before I'd leave stage, or before you leave stage, I think it'd be great if you could present the UC Championship trophy to our first 15 captain, Adam Reid. I do want to congratulate the first 15 on their outstanding season, uh, their deserved victory in the UC Championship, and uh, your outstanding performance in the South Island final. Uh, the school's very proud of you, so Adam, if you could come forward.
just give Alex a chance to leave. E kōkona whare, e kitia, e kōkona nāko, e kore, e kitia. The corners of a hall can be seen and examined, but not the corners of the human heart. Marina boys, uh, Marina staff, Marina to our special guests, uh, John Osborne, the board chair and board members. Uh, Kau mātua, mātua rangi, rangiha Timoana and mātua Timariki Williams, uh, representing uh, Runaka, uh, Nai Tuahuri, Lin Tahaki, representing the PTA, the Vice President, Malcolm York, uh, David Rankin, Chair of the Takura Trust, Quinn Henderson, Old Boy and CEO of South Base, and from the Ministry of Education, Old, Boys David Ho Old Boy David Hogan and Craig Morrison. Thank you, Ben, uh, for the reading. The hall does represent understanding an understanding of the value of community and connection, and also an understanding of and empathy for each other. Uh, thank you very much to our whānau for this uh, precious gift. It's an honour to be the headmaster of this school. Uh, thank you to the Kapa Haka, for the Haka Pauwhiri, to the Funk Band, uh, for the well-chosen processional. Uh, thank you to our Kaumatua uh, for the blessing of the hall this morning. And it's my pleasure now to invite uh, Matua Daniel to come forward and tell us about what's happened this morning. He kokonga fare e kitea, he kokonga ngā kau e kore e kitea. The, halls, uh, the corners of the hall can be seen and examined, but not the corners of the human heart. Uh, Mr Hill used this whakatauki and it's very relevant for our important day. The eastern doors of our hall open up to the rising sun. Its western doors provide us with a waharoa. To the south, we're bordered by Tangaroa, the traditional ancestor of the seas and the rivers, and to the north, we have our sacred shrine. Its heartbeat is provided by the footsteps of her sons, you, our students, our staff, our board, our whānau, our ayinga, our families, and our old boys, for this is the heart of the school. So today began with a blessing of the hall that involved karakia and prayers. Both Christian and traditional Māori karakia and prayers were used, and this was to ensure that we recognise both languages of the partnership peoples, Māori and Pākehā. <coughs> I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Matua Rangihau Te Moana, Matua Te Mairiki Williams and Whaia Lin Te Aika. Um, after the traditional blessing, our welcome, uh, the welcome that began was a haka pōhiri, and there was three haka of welcome. The first haka was tahu pōtiki. That's a mihi tua mana whenua, ngai tahu and ngai tua huriri. Nei rā te mihi matakui kui matakorokoro kia koutau. It is also recognition of our first Māori old boy and his whānau. This Māori old boy received an OBE. He was also the first old boy to be inducted into the Rugby Hall of Fame with the New Zealand Natives team of 1888. 
His name was Riki Te Mairaki Tairoa. And even more special, we have some of his mokopuna, his descendants, including Te One Arahanga Martindale, Jake Benny and Joseph Benny, here with us at school today. Mangumangu Taipo, the second of our haka pōhiri, is a haka from Taranaki. This is to recognise our Old Boys Association and our second Māori Old Boy family, the Pō Māori Whānau. This is the, um, the Pō Māori, uh, sorry, I'll start again. This is uh, the name that the Pō Māori House takes. Uh, Māori, Pō Māori was the first ever Māori to become a doctor. He graduated in 1898 in the USA. He was also the first ever president of our Christchurch Boys High School Old Boys Association. Ko te kura o ngā tamatāne o tautahi e pāororo nei au, au, au e hā. Christchurch Boys High School echoes from every generation. Our final haka, our school haka, which binds us all together and represents all of us from all ethnicities and cultures in all corners of the world, illustrates unity, honour and pride from our beginnings in 1881 to this very day, the 5th of September 2017. Now, a korowai, a traditional Māori cloak crafted by one of our Farno members, Mr. Jared Riwai Couch, was gifted to the school by the Christchurch Boys High School Farno Committee for the position of headmaster, and only the headmaster, Mr. Hill, and subsequent headmasters may wear it. Mr. Hill was also presented with a ponamu taonga, a personal gift from the Farno, and it has been warmed, worn, and presented by Mitchell Redman. It was carved by another one of our extended whānau, Angai Tahu Kava Kuru Grey, Motua Wudamu Grey's father. The name of our korowai is Te Kura Kahurangi. Kura has a dual meaning. It can be translated as school, or a more traditional translation as treasure. The word kahurangi also has a number of meanings. In its simplest form, it means blue, one of our main school colours. It also refers to the heavens and being able to draw on heavenly power. Te kura kahurangi as a whole refers to treasures descended from the highest pinnacle. It fits with our school motto, Alti or Peta, I seek higher things. And for this reason, we have also associated the Fakatauki, Faya iteti kahurangi, seek that which is most precious. When the kura is worn by our headmaster, we will know him in Māori as Te Amorangi, which translates to the leader. Ete farno farnui ia kunu ia kurahi ahakoa iti no te kupu kanui te mihi kai te dere tonu ngam hi kia tato katoa te na koutau te na koutau te na koutau katoa. Please be seated, boys. Thank you, Amato Daniel, for your words. Uh, boys, we all benefit from a wider cultural view of the world. It's important that we do learn cross-cultural skills and uh, we'll be deprived if our environment is monocultural. And I'm just gonna hook up some technology
Does that happen, Brett? Great. So boys, I'd like to tell you about the hall. So there's been a constant theme in the school's history of trying to build a hall to accommodate the entire school. When the school was constructed at Straven Road in 1926, provision was made for an assembly hall off the vestibule. It wasn't until 1938 that the hall was first built, but not completed. And headmasters reports throughout the 40s and 50s mention the need to raise funds to complete the hall. <coughs> the hall represents the school's desire to build community and reflect our school pride. Today is a significant milestone in school's history as we look towards the next 136 years. When the hall at Straven Road was first opened, Mr. Jay McKenzie, who represented donors at Assembly, spoke about the hall. And he said, I trust that it will bring masters and boys more closely together for the benefit of the boys. Now, one of the very important first design decisions was to put this hall back on a central axis, axis with the shrine, the stairs, the memorial doors, and the stained glass window. So the memorial doors at the top of the stairs were unveiled in 1953 by Sir Howard Kippenberger. And on the panels either side of the doors are the names of the more than 200 old boys who died in World War II. This memorial aligns with the shrine, which is a memorial to those who died in World War I. In each corner of the stairway, of the stairway landing, is a memorial book and a locked glass case. The book on the left contains the names of the old boys killed in World War I, and the book on the right contains the names of those killed in the Second War. Also at the top of the stairs are two stained glass windows, which remember school and New Zealand's greatest soldier, Major General Sir Howard Carl Kippenberger. Kippenberger died in 1957, and the Old Boys Association decided in 1958 to commemorate his memory with these two stained glass windows. So the east window has the ensign of the 1st Canterbury Regiment, which is a white heron standing on one leg in water and surrounded by two green fern fronds. The border is composed of small crowns and crosses, and it has a quote from Kippenberger. In each of these great struggles, we fought against the powers of evil incarnate on the earth, and by God's blessing, we have prevailed. The struggle still continues and will forever. And then it has the Māori words, Aki, Aki, Kia Kaha, forever and ever, be strong. The west window depicts the archangel Michael defeating the dragon. The archangel in armour stands upon the dragon and slays it with his spear in its gullet. Michael holds a shield in the scales of justice, and above the group is the crown of eternal life. The border depicts the initials of both Howard Kippenberger and Michael, and it has biblical text from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. And what does the Lord God require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God? The windows were unveiled on Anzac Day, 1961, and one of school's great old boys, Brigadier J.T. Burroughs, gave the Anzac address. Burroughs had been senior monitor, head of Adams House, captain of the first 15 and first 11. He was senior boxing champion and senior cadets officer. He was the Dean's scholar. He played cricket for Canterbury, and he was also the New Zealand University's boxing champion. He was an all black and later all black coach. In World War II, Burroughs was a divisional commander and he led a famous breakout after being surrounded by the Germans in the North African desert in an action described as the most ferocious infantry engagement of the war. Burroughs was also the rector of Waitaki Boys High School and commanded the New Zealand Army in Korea. In Burroughs' Anzac address, he talked of serving overseas and meeting with old boys and reminiscing on school days, talking of former masters and incidents that made them laugh. He said, I thought then, as I think now, that the same qualities that made a good schoolboy made a good soldier. Unselfishness, thoughtfulness, sorry, thoughtfulness for others, truth, honesty, loyalty, courage, the very foundations on which a school like this is built. Burroughs also spoke of Kippenberger in his address. Kippenberger, was of slight build. He was gentle in manner, and he was observed to be shy. He was unusually for the time an emotional man, yet Kippenberger is remembered 
as New Zealand's greatest soldier. At age 18, Kippenberger served as a sniper for 10 weeks in the Somme until he was seriously wounded. In World War II, he won two distinguished service orders and he rose to lead the New Zealand division. As a leader, he had a special bond with his men because his men knew he always put them first. He was determined to be a better leader than with regard to the welfare of his men than the generals he had experienced in World War I. Two examples of Kippenberger putting his men first occurred when the New Zealand division was in Greece and also in North Africa. In Greece, when Kippenberger commanded a small party that had the job of blowing demolitions that would hinder the German advance, his determination to make sure as many men as possible escaped meant he was cut off. And after blowing the demolitions, he and his small group had to escape by abandoning their vehicles and cutting over the Greek mountains on foot. In the North African desert, Kippenberger was shot in the leg and taken prisoner. He managed to escape by stealing a German truck. Now, the escape would have been easy if he'd done it on his own, but he filled the truck with other wounded prisoners first. Burroughs said the memorial windows were more than a memorial to one man, but were a memorial to everything that Kippenberger stood for, a memorial to courage, service, high endeavour, justice, mercy and humility. He said, may they be an inspiration to all who pass through this school. May they remind us always that nothing worthwhile, nothing great is ever achieved without sacrifice. Just one more story about Kippenberger. In 1949, Kippenberger caused a great stir in New Zealand when he spoke out about the exclusion of Māori and the All Black team to tour South Africa. He plainly stated that if Māori were good enough to fight and die for New Zealand, they were good enough to be All Blacks. So either side of the hall, uh, on the east is the Old Boys Quad, and to the west, the Waha Roar. And think of a, a lion, what a lion does, a lion roars, and that's how we pronounce that, Waha Roar. Uh, this is our ceremonial entrance for Māori occasions, uh, pōwhiri or mihi whakatau. The triangle patterns on the outside of the hall represent the Raupo swamp that once enveloped Rikadin, which was a food gathering area for Māori. And you'll also see this pattern replicated uh, in the windows of the hall, uh, in the glass in the Dean's buildings, and on the, the glass in the canopy outside the hall. And you'll see that pattern uh, replicated as we, as we rebuild the rest of the school. Uh, and Mr Gray, our councillor, is currently working on a carving, uh, carving a pare that will adorn the Waharoa. The hall, uh, importantly, has uh, portraits of the former headmasters. Uh, this is a portrait of Charles Bevan Brown, who was headmaster for 36 years, uh, from 1884 to 1920. And the stained glass window that's behind me was donated by old boys when the hall was rebuilt in 1997. So these are some uh, old boys who were fighting in the North African desert in the, in the Second War. Boys, you know this is a, a special building. It demands a certain level of behaviour. It's where we affirm our school pride. In doing so, it makes us a better school. Uh, it's now my pleasure to invite the Pacifica Choir to sing.
Hello, boys. Uh, very, very proud of you. Thank you very much. Boys, this is the building of the hall is an outstanding achievement for the school, and it has been a lot of energy, a lot of focus uh, for a number of people, and especially the board. And the board have constantly, in their discussions with, and I, I do use that word purposely, the discussions with the ministry, uh, have talked about the fact that we're doing this for you. So it is my Pleasure to invite our board chairman, John Osborne, to address the school. As I step up from my uh, ringside seat there, I'm reminded of a phrase, and if I may be excused to paraphrase, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for the school to find myself standing here today. Tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Marina, young men, staff and honoured guests. It's my privilege to speak on behalf of the Board of Trustees on this special occasion and recognise those who have contributed to our Hall's construction. The Headmaster has spoken of the history of the Hall and what it represents to us in terms of spirit and action. He has spoken of the words on the Kippenberger windows, Ake, Ake, Kia Kaha, forever and ever be strong. The opening of the new hall marks the creation of the space that we as a community can stand together as one school to celebrate all that is good about belonging and recognise individual and group achievements. It is here we can be strong together. A magnificent hall such as this is uncommon in schools today. The decision to create this space has come from the reflection on what is important to the school in terms of achievement, tradition and culture. It has taken hard discussions and a lot of thought to even begin this journey, and certainly even more to bring it to this stage. The hall is a practical demonstration of our values, meaningful relationships, integrity, high expectations and respect. It is part of our mission statement made physical, educating fine young men towards outstanding achievement. It has been built for you because of the faith and expectation we place in you to play your part in leading New Zealand and the world to be a better place. I hope the space will be an instrument in the journey where you will understand better about being part of something bigger than yourselves, 
understanding the value of achievement, and being motivated to strive for achievement yourself. No one person has built this space. It has come from the body of work of individuals and groups who have joined together to achieve this goal for your benefit. They have applied those values that we as a school hold to, and through cooperation created this. I'm proud to acknowledge just a few of those who have worked for the school to create our new hall. In an attempt such as this, uh, there is always a risk of missing some uh, who truly deserve mention. Um, if this has occurred, I hope they will excuse my omission. I start with Mr. Peter Woods, previous chair who inhabited this, uh, sorry, in, who, who in, initiated this process that has led us here today. Minister Brownlee, as Member of Parliament for Ireland, has supported the school in the initial stage of this process and has maintained ongoing interest in boys' high developments. I acknowledge the Ministry of Education, David Hoburn, Craig Morrison and Sonny Sun. They have listened to us and our vision of what is important to boys' high and have worked with us to get where we are today. We will continue to work in partnership with the Ministry as we proceed with the redevelopment of the Boys High buildings. The old boys, both within the association and as, as, uh, and as individuals without, they have given their support and time to this project. As well as the executive, I recognise David Hopkins for his engineering expertise and Murray Strong in enabling community consultation. I recognise parents, whānau and friends of the school who have contributed with their clear message of expectation both around this project and the strategic plan that has guided our decision making. I also acknowledge the PTA represented here by Malcolm York today and Takura Trust uh, represented by David Rankin. Um, their practical contribution to actually enabling this to happen is much appreciated. Our architects have been JASMAX. Hamish Boyd, Lars von Minden, Clive Jackman, Martin Barr, Carmel Wade, Richard Heyman, and Gwena Gilbert, they have all worked developing our master plan from con concept into the actual reality of this remarkable space. The Greenstone project team, Nigel Cooper, Tony Weber, Adrian Matthews, and Elliot Brown have managed this project through to completion meeting challenges as they arose with professionalism and creativity to ensure the successful completion of the work. Consulting engineers Lewis Bradford with Ash Wilson and Robert Lane have taken on the responsibility of developing engineering solutions that have worked in our unique environment. Ash Wilson has shared his passion for the work he has done by speaking to the school about the role of engineering in making the hall possible. Construction has been done by South Base Quinn Henderson, Nick Jennings, Phil Craw, and Aldo Dupriz have been some of the key members of this team. They have risen to the challenge of this project and timeframes. They have shown a real commitment to the school and have built a fine hall that we will enjoy using for decades to come. Living in a building project is not an easy thing to do. It tests relationships and requires stamina to endure the practical facts of a construction site. I wish to highlight the work done by Mr. Craig Dunnett, working with the construction team on a daily basis, coordinating with them to ensure that the school calendar is able to run as smoothly as possible. Our caretakers, Kevin Newlands and Alex Dryden, have put up with uh, disruption and relocation over this time and have managed their duties well. Staff of both music, drama and IT have also spent considerable time ensuring the hall space has been developed to meet the needs of the school. Their work will make the hall a key space for cultural activities. You, the students and staff, endured the necessities of the construction, the relocations, the noise, the broken paths, and all the other disruptions to school life. On top of that, you, the students, have been without the hall for six years and maintained our school spirit throughout this time. Well done. Ultimately, the responsibility of the day-to-day -day management of the school falls to one person the headmaster. He has not only carried the usual responsibilities of school leadership, but also that of hall development. I acknowledge the work Nick Hill has done over and above his usual demanding role in the school. I will finish with the school governance of this project. 
Community members, Andrew Haig and Pete Summers, have freely given their time to support the school. They have brought considerable expertise from their professions and are an example of the community support the school enjoys. Both this and the previous board have invested much time and energy into this project, both at board level and through the property steering group. <coughs> I recognise the work of Mark Walls, Lilius Brown, Leanne Watson, Paul Nichols, Jack Harris, Mike Medlicott, Hugh Dacre, David Caldwell, Anne Johnson, as well as previous members, Philip Roth, Jonathan King, Kerry Jarden, Billy Hansen, Peter Woods, Sam Eddington, and Raphael Franks. At the end of my speech, I will ask you to show your appreciation to all those who have served the school to bring us to this point today, including those who remain unmentioned. Finally, this is our space, the heart and soul of the school. Let us use this hall well and wisely and grow as a school in success and friendship. Altiora Peto. Uh, thank you very much, John. Boys, to represent school is a privilege. And another privilege uh, is to cross stage. So when boys cross stage, they'll come up these stairs, um, usually shake my hand and then come down these stairs. And to cross stage not only means outstanding achievement, but also you'll only be able or invited to cross stage if you're reflecting the school's motto of Aotearoa Peto. So we've already recognised uh, Adam Reid in the first 15 this morning, but there's some other students I'd like to recognise. Uh, the first of those is Jack Zidich. So Jack is an ICAS science medal winner. So students who gain the top score in the ICAS science exam receive a medal. And Jack is one of 100 students from 980,000 entries who achieve this top score. So well done, Jack. Daniel Meehan has successfully won the Australian Golden Glove boxing title in the 57 kilo weight division. Uh, this happened in Brisbane while he was representing Canterbury. Great achievement, Daniel, well done. <laughs> Our cyclists have performed outstandingly at the Southern School Tour in Blenheim. Uh, in the under-15 general classification, second was Mikiel van Hennigan. In the under-16 in the general classification, first was Lawrence Pithy and third, third was Abe O'Donnell. The king of the mountain, was uh, first was Lawrence Pithy. And the sprint ace, also first, was Lawrence Pithy and third was Abe O'Donnell. The under-16 national criterion champion was Lawrence Pithy. So I'll get Mikiel, Abe and Lawrence to come forward. And in under 17 in the general classification, third was Griffin Spencer, uh, and the king of the mountains, second was Griffin Spencer, and the sprint ace, third was Griffin Spencer. And under 20 in the general classification, first was Campbell Pithy, second was Bailey O'Donnell. The king of the mountain, first was Nick Thornley, and third was Bailey O'Donnell. The sprint ace was Campbell Pithy, and the under 20 national criterium champion was Campbell Pithy. Our golfers uh, are in the Hawke's Bay, uh, 
waiting to play in the New Zealand Under-19 Championships. However, yesterday, our golf team won the New Zealand Secondary Schools golf title, uh, so we will recognise them when they return to school. But the team is, that's coached by Mr Bone is made up of Tom Parker, Dominic Brett Kelly, Ben Baker and Jack Ryder. Tom was the first individual in the New Zealand Secondary Schools, uh, Ben was second and Dominic was fourth. So boys, I've talked about the moment that the hall means for us as a school in terms of building community and reflecting our pride. And you know, we've talked about from this moment, things like the uniform get better. But we also have a bigger purpose, guys. Uh, we need to be better men. The hall is a special place because it's a place where men meet. And we can therefore work on and discuss what it means to be a good man. It's strong, caring, inclusive, respectful of women, respectful of difference. We have outstanding old boys who have set a stunning example, but it's actually the job of everyone here right now to raise the standard, and it will only be raised if we're decent and moral. As men, it shouldn't be a risk for us to have emotional conversations, and I do want the hall to signify a start or or actually a, a greater frequency of those conversations. So we'll start them in the hall and they'll be continued in class and around the school. The five million plus spent on the hall will be worth it if we get better at looking after each other. I'd be thrilled and proud if we got better at checking in with our mates. You know, how often do we ask, how are you? So thanks boys, I'm looking forward to the school and the spirit we will build. Out your repeto. Please stand for the school song.
Thank you.